This is the Eyewitness 12 Weekend Report with news anchor Randy Little, weather with Dan Royo, and sports with Don Burroughs. Good evening, everyone. I'm Randy Little. Here's what's happening tonight. All over the greater Cincinnati area tonight, people are camping outside the door of various lending institutions. Seems like the one today in front of the Businessmen's Federal in downtown are common. As scores of would-be home buyers line up for low-interest mortgage loans available beginning tomorrow. Ohio voters approved the sale of the bonds last November, a sale which has resulted in 9.98% mortgage money for qualified home buyers. But money is not technically available until one minute past midnight tonight. And that's when Businessmen's Federal will be open for business. Tonight, Dan, we will just be making a list of the people that, that will be our, our borrowers uh, or our applicants. Just because they're on the list, they may not even qualify, you know, income, what have you. But uh, it gets us a start, and we'll go from there. By the way, Humbert helped out his weekend waiting line by providing some police protection overnight, as well as a portable restroom. Humbert said that for those who were unable to get in on this round of bond money, it is his understanding that the state plans another bond sale later this year. In other news now tonight, a Norwood man is in critical condition after being hit by a train this morning. Police say that 21-year-old Larry Jones was sitting beside the railroad tracks under the Montgomery Road overpass when the freight train hit him. The engineer says he saw the man, but that it was too late to stop. Police say that Jones was apparently trying to get shelter from the rain and apparently fell asleep. Five members of what has been called a major international drug ring were convicted yesterday in Cincinnati on drug trafficking charges. A federal jury deliberated two days before reaching the verdict. The five were charged with selling over 20 pounds of cocaine to drug enforcement agents in Boone County last February. Street value on the drugs, four to five million dollars. A Northside youth has been charged with stabbing another boy last night. Police say the 14-year-old boy allegedly stabbed 16-year-old Bobby Young with a pocket knife during an argument. Young is in satisfactory condition tonight with a stab wound. The other youth has been charged with felonious assault. Still ahead on the weekend report, angry church members take to the streets to protest the actions of their parish leaders. And Steve Forrest reports on Grady Stumbo's uphill battle to secure the spot in Kentucky's governor's mansion. On Memorial Day, these stands will echo the thunder of the Indy 500, and Goodyear will be here. But right now, you should be at Goodyear, because Goodyear's Memorial Day sale is on now. Save on radials, light truck tires, and more. Plus the entire line of Goodyear Eagle high-performance radials. Come to Goodyear now, because on Memorial Day, it'll be too late. Save with number one, Goodyear. The sale ends May 28th. Come experience the ultimate thrill, the rise of King's Island. The rise of King's Island. They'll take your body and your mind to where they've never been before. The best thrills the world has to offer. Only at King's Island. Okay, everybody, check your calendars. There's just one full day of campaigning left in Kentucky's Democratic gubernatorial primary, and so far the race is still considered a close one. Tonight, reporter Steve Forrest continues his report on the three main Democratic candidates with a look at Grady Stumbo. Grady Stumbo came to northern Kentucky Thursday night for his last visit before Tuesday's primary. But in spite of the exhortation of his supporters, Grady Stumbo's campaign is one that's been in trouble from the start. Perhaps the biggest problem that Stumbo faces is one of image. The image that he's out of this race, that it's merely a contest between Martha Lane Collins and Harvey Sloan. Stumbo's own polls show him third, but the candidate maintains that that figure is rising rapidly, especially with the endorsement last week of Kentucky Governor John Y. Brown. Even Brown concedes Stumbo is a long shot. And Stumbo says he's had his troubles convincing others to take his campaign seriously. Because the only two things that the media decide the front runner on is organizational strategy and money. And if that's how you want to count it, then I'm third. Stumbo refuses to count himself out, however, depending on numerous union endorsements to help him win both the working man's vote and the primary. And while his two main opponents say they have specific plans for Northern Kentucky, Stumbo doesn't go that far saying the whole state has to recover economically. You can't have a healthy Kentucky if Louisville's hurting. You can't have a healthy Kentucky if Northern Kentucky's hurting. So I think you first have to have basic statewide policies. 
Some of those policies include reactivating work camps in eastern Kentucky as an alternative to building more prisons, tax credits for starting new business, higher school funding to lower Kentucky's dropout rate, but a possible tax increase to help pay for that funding. We're looking forward to seeing it. Great. We're Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for that help. That's right. We need it. While Stumbo and the other Democrats feverishly battle for votes, the man who is sure to be the Republican nominee for governor is coasting through this primary. We'll report on Jim Bunning of Fort Thomas tomorrow. Steve Forrest, Eyewitness 12 News with Grady Stumbo in Erlanger. Looks like it'll be a good race. Eyewitness 12 will have complete election results for you on primary day. The water is still receding in many Campbell County creeks tonight after flooding from an early morning downpour. One stru such trouble spot is 12 Mile Creek, which flooded the Goobser Road Bridge. Residents say this is the eighth straight weekend it's been flooded out. Two families used the bridge, which was built two years ago to replace one damaged in a flood. Rick Carr says two weeks ago he tried to take his son to a doctor when the car became trapped in the stream. Halfway out. And it just started rushing in my windows. I had to get my kids and my wife out and carry them over to the bank to get them out of the car, you know. And I went back up to Margie Holcomb's house to get her to pull me out with her truck. By the time I got up there, the back of the car was inching over. It was almost off the edge. His neighbor, Margie Holcomb, says the county has made repairs to the bridge, which has only three 12-inch pipes to handle the flow. However, Holcomb says the blacktop just washes away. Campbell County Judge Executive Lloyd Rogers tells me he's not sure that the county has ever legally accepted responsibility for the upkeep of Goobser Road or the bridge, and that if it became necessary, emergency crews would get through to all families involved. Here in Ohio, some Green Hills residents took to their, their complaints to church officials today, setting up a picket line outside Our Lady of the Rosary. The picketers are unhappy with the way the parish school is being run, and the principal in particular. They say the problem started last year and that they haven't been able to get any results using more traditional means to get their point across. We've been to the Archdiocese several times. They, they, they thought that if they left the problem alone, it would go away. We've got meetings scheduled next week with the Monsignor, and then after that, we go to the Arch, Archbishop. Today's protest met with mixed reaction, some parishioners saying the time and place were inappropriate. The priest at the church has declined to comment, and the school's principal and the archdiocese have been unavailable for comment. On the national news and international scene, both former West German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt and Soviet authorities expressed pessimism over the U.S.-Soviet arms talks. Schmidt told the Washington Post he's skeptical of American sincerity, and the Communist Party newspaper today accused Washington of blocking an agreement in the negotiations. Meanwhile, U.S. officials say they don't expect to break in the talks until sometime next fall. A nationwide survey shows gasoline prices have jumped over 12 and a half cents a gallon since mid-March, and oil industry analyst Dan Lundberg says the entire increase has gone to refiners and to taxes. Lundberg says retail dealers in fierce competition has actually absor absorbed about two cents a gallon hike in wholesale prices. The oil expert says the average price of gasoline now stands at almost $1.23 a gallon. We may also soon be digging deeper into our pockets when we want to mail a letter. The Postal Service is preparing a request for higher rates. Postmaster General William Bolger says the hike is necessary despite a $100 million budget surplus predicted for this fiscal year. The months of May and June are traditionally the most dangerous time of the year for Ohio drivers between the ages of 16 and 20. And according to state safety officials, the warm weather and end of school tempts a lot of young drivers to lose their common sense when behind the wheel. Statistics show that last year, the traffic death toll for 16 to 20 year olds was the highest of any age group here in the state of Ohio. Now to try and fight this problem, the Ohio State Patrol has started a program which puts extra cars on the road the night of high school proms and graduations. So young drivers, you might want to keep an eye out. Still to come on the Weekend Report, Cincinnati musicians play the songs of one who played them the best. Starting today, forget what you know about other lawnmowers. Because Lawn Boy has totally redesigned their mower from the grass up to work better with the way your body works. New effort-saving design for easier starting. Comfortable fingertip blade control. Plus an especially durable, long-lasting engine. The Blade Control Lawn Boy. There's never been a mower like it.
Lawn Boy, as time goes by, you'll know why. Chevy's, Honda's, custom vans. They're hot this month, and Superior's got them. That's right, Superior's got 9.9% financing on Chevy Chevettes and Citations. 9.9% financing on S10s, with over 50 to choose from. And payments as low as $99 a month. And only Superior's got Honda Civics and Accords at 9.9% financing. Superior's got custom vans at the best prices in town, too. Chevy's, Honda's, custom vans. Get yours now from one of the Tri-State's largest. Superior Chevrolet Honda. Brian, where's the Henderson proposal? When you're having a busy day, it's nice to know you can bank at the office with Jeannie. Just use your card number, give her your password on any touchstone phone, and ask Jeannie your account balances. You can transfer money from savings to checking, pay bills instantly, and even save postage. Bank at the office with Jeannie. It's easy. Have a good evening, O'Brien. O'Brien? Thank you. Jeannie can do. O'Brien? You've got a front row seat for today's hottest entertainment on Entertainment Tonight. It's an exclusive backstage visit with Sylvester Stallone and a look at how he's directing a winner on the screen. And then join Ira and me at 7.30 for PM Magazine. We'll show you the Cincinnati Observatory. We'll also show you previews of the newest Star Wars film, Return of the Jedi. And Rhonda Kinnett learns the fine art of base stealing. Join us Monday night on Channel 12. A Cincinnati jazz great, killed just nine days ago, was honored tonight in Coryville. A memorial concert for Frank Brown, longtime Cincinnati jazz musician and composer, drew a packed house to the Corbett Auditorium on UC's campus this evening. Brown died on May 13th of stab wounds from an attack outside his club in Oakley. Performing tonight were the College Conservatory of Music's one o'clock jazz ensemble and the CCM's faculty jazz sextet. Brown is described by one colleague as one of Cincinnati's most underrated assets. Frank was taken for granted. I, at the outset of the show tonight, I read two telegrams, one from a former student who is, uh, who is now the uh, road man manager for a Woody Herman band and also a, a note from Woody Herman. So mm -hmm. people around the country really knew Frank. Persons wishing to contribute to the Frank Brown Memorial Scholarship Fund should contact the dean's office at the College Conservatory of Music. Uh, nice music out there tonight. Very nice it music. Very, very Nothing nice. like listening to jazz. You don't want to sing the blues, though, about the weather, because we're getting some sunshine. No, we don't. We're going to have a little bit of rain, but it's going to be widely scattered. Chances are you may not even get any out at your place. But the Weather Service told me just a little while ago that as of today, we have had 8.39 inches of rain since the 1st of May, which is five, almost six inches above our normal, making this, Randolph, the fifth yeah. wet, fifth, fifth wettest May. I could tell that by my garden. Yes, I could, t I could tell that by my basement. It's still down there. I'm going to open up a, uh, an aquarium store sometime next week. You'll see the ads in all the papers. It's partly cloudy outside right now. 66 is the current temperature for those keeping track. That's 19 Celsius. Humidity stands at 70%. Winds are out of the southwest at 12, still making a nice breeze to blow through the window to sleep by tonight. Barometer 29.87, it is falling just a little bit. Precipitation since midnight, just over three quarters of an inch, and the river level up from earlier this evening at 40.4. They say probably hit about 41 sometime tomorrow. Satellite photograph fresh in and literally hot off the old AP machine shows a little horseshoe effect that there are a lot, there is a great deal of clearing around the tri-state area, but there are some patches of showers around there too, and they seem to be dissipating. As soon as they pop up, they sprinkle a little bit and then go away, and that seems to be the trend that we're going to be in for the next uh, couple of days. Now, yes, we've had a cold front go through, and yes, the map shows that there is a little bit of rain around the area, but like I said, it pops up and goes away, and it seems to be drying itself out for some reason or the other. Now, tomorrow, we're going to have this second cold front come through the area late tomorrow afternoon, early tomorrow evening. Again, it's falling apart. There's not a lot of moisture with it. What will be there will be very short-lived, and maybe Dan will have a dry basement for a change, too. After this goes through, a high pressure will build in here starting late tomorrow night, and then Tuesday and Wednesday, maybe even Thursday, we're talking sunny skies, temperatures in the 70s, and gardens that are going to finally dry out, knock on wood. Some high temperatures from around the countryside today. Good old Bullhead, Arizona, once again, 108 degrees. And the nation's overnight low, 27 at Leadville, Colorado. We came really close to normal today. Look at that, 75 degrees. The record 92 was set back in 1941. 10 degrees above the norm. That was our overnight low. The record set back in 1883. 
Radar outside, you see a lot of stuff around Cincinnati. That's ground clutter, amalgamated proliferation, as we sometimes call it. There are a few showers just to the south of Indianapolis, some back to the northwest. Again, these showers are moving to the east, and they are decreasing in intensity as they do, so we may get off lucky tonight. AccuWeather says we will have variable clouds, that's for sure. A chance of a thunder shower around. Winds will be south. West, 10 to 20, a low of 56. Then for tomorrow, clouds and sunshine, a slight chance of a shower or two with a high of 70. Tomorrow night, we'll cool off a little bit. We'll have a few more clouds come by, a low of 48. Then on Tuesday, partly sunny, 72. Wednesday, even more partly sunny and 77. On Thursday, some variable cloudiness. Another system could be on its way to us, a chance of a shower with a high of 72. Nothing to really get too concerned or upset about. It looks like with Mayfest cranking up uh, later on this week. I think it starts Tuesday night. Yeah. We should have some beautiful evenings, especially Tuesday. And we, I think Nancy Wilson performs Tuesday night yeah. down at Square. Uh, there are a lot of Square, concerts, yeah. A bunch of them. Looks like we should have some pretty good weather for at least the first part of it. Good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear. I understand the Seventh Fleet called. They want to use your basement for naval maneuvers. <clears throat> Great. I've got a bar. <laughs> bar the, yeah, that's fine. Got a place <laughs> to tie up and everything. Okay. Thanks very much, Dan. Uh, thousands are apparently unhappy with the weather, especially around the Mississippi Valley today. Uh, thousands had to flee rising river waters in Mississippi. Uh, flooding already claimed six lives there, including some four people from the same family. The forecasters say the Pearl River will crest tomorrow, about 10 feet above flood stage. In Houston, cleanup efforts have begun after three waves of tornadoes went through there, Dan. Left 10 people dead, about 1,000 families homeless this week. Weather's causing problems overseas as well. 20 straight days of rain and snow are being blamed for causing an avalanche in Italy today. Nine people were killed when tons of mud and snow roared down on the small town of Teglio near the Swiss border. At least 20 others were injured, 15 homes destroyed by the wall of snow. Up next, sports with Don Burroughs and the Indy 500 field is now ready to roll. We'll have the list for you and details in a moment. The dogs in Georgia way to buy carpet today. Hooray! Now at Tim Hogan's Carpet Outlet, their warehouse clearance sale is in full swing. Thousands of square yards of wall-to-wall -wall carpet. Sale price with no added charge for regular padding and installation. Need a room size remnant? Carpet remnant prices are cut in half. And your extra bonus? Instant credit and 90 days same as cash. So remember, Tim Hogan's the way to buy carpet. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do it fresh. We only serve you plump, wholesome chicken that's just been cooked. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do it special. Only original recipe chicken is cooked under pressure with the Colonel's 11 herbs and spices, so the seasonings are squeezed into each juicy bite. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do it big. Our Kentucky Fries are big potato wedges. With the skins left on. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. My partner and I were on assignment investigating the lettuce shortage. What do you see? I see people, and they're eating our lettuce with Seven Seas Viva Italian dressing. Is it true about the top? Absolutely. The exclusive shaker top keeps the delicate herbs and spices in Seven Seas Viva Italian perfectly blended, shake after shake. So, it really is true. Oops! <laughs> with Seven Seas Viva Italian, our lettuce shortage may never end. I'd like to talk with you about an unpleasant subject, your toilet, and how to keep it ship -ship. Lysol Toilet Bowl Clean has got this ingenious little spout that enables you to get its considerable cleaning ability and full-strength disinfection to work even up under the rim. Though I know this seems rather sordid, but Lysol scuttles rust and mineral stains while it disinfects. Lysol, it's the whole bowl cleaner. Coming! Coming, dear. Thought I was the butler? I'm the ambassador. We've had to economize. We were talking about the 500, and apparently there's only going to be one entry from uh, the tri-state area uh, uh, that made it. Yeah, that's correct in uh, sponsorship-wise. Sponsorship-wise. Didn't make it, right, right. But uh, the Reds did make it today, so yeah. and that's why I'm going to begin everything with the Reds. Uh, even though they are leaving Wrigley Field, they're coming home. They took two or three from the Cubs. They're dominating those Cubs. And right now the team is just four under 500. We pick up the highlights with a score tied at 2-2. And look at Gary Reed has smacked this ball clear out onto the street. Shades of big Frank Howard, isn't it? That made it 3-2 when Paul Householder, who's really been carrying a hot bat, picks up uh, an RBI. And I should say that made it 4-2. And then this is Bull Durham, who hit his second home run against his uh, old native team he used to root for in as many days. His seventh of the year, it was 4-3. But Mario Soto was just outstanding today. He pitches a four-hitter. Two of those hits were home runs, but he had 10 strikeouts. 
and here he induces the game-ending double play ball, which Ronnie Oster turns over so beautifully at second base. Nobody has a better pivot than Oster over there. So Soto is 6-2, and two, and the Reds come home to take on the world champion St. Louis Cardinals tomorrow. In the meantime, here's your scoreboard. Atlanta winning in extra innings, and the Dodgers getting a shutout from Bob Welsh, a two-hitter there. San Francisco is shut out by uh, Lee of Montreal, and then there's a postponement by rain, and also Houston Pittsburgh postponed by rain. In the American League, the Brewers hit five home runs, plus shut out Seattle. The Yanks are now two and a half games behind Baltimore, making a small move after their uh, victory today. How about Bruce Keeson? Now 6-1 and one for California. Remember, he's known as Mr. October, off to a great start this year, and Carew... Crew only had three hits today. He's at 449. And Lamar Hoyt now three and six as uh, he takes advantage of the White Sox power today, beating Kansas City. Elsewhere, uh, Minnesota wins in 12, although Jim Rice did hit his eighth home run of the year. Clancy a three-hitter as Toronto shuts out Baltimore for the second straight day. And Detroit pounds Texas Lance Parrish hit his eighth home run of the year. We switch to basketball now. The 76ers are off and running toward that championship ring everybody wants the doctor to be able to wear after this season is over. They opened with a 113 to 107 win over the Lakers. It was in Philadelphia, although the Lakers did lead at half. That's Clay Johnson right there with the alley-oop right at half. They were up by three, and Kareem had a good offensive game, the little alley-oop right there from Magic. He had 20 points, but Clint Richardson, look at this sweet little move, 15 points all in the second half to really spark it, and Big Moses, 27 points, 18 rebounds. He's unbelievable on the boards inside. Julius Irving, 20 points. There's two of them, but 10 rebounds and 10 assists. There he is flying high. Everybody, almost everybody, hopes that uh, the 76ers uh, can win it for him. Game two is in Philadelphia, by the way, and that will be on Thursday, which will help the Lakers. They get a little bit of a rest now. The fastest field in Indy history is now set. They averaged 198 miles per hour as a group. The Hoffmans, as I said, did not make it. However, Pat Bedard has the Cincinnati microwave-sponsored car in the middle of the sixth row. One driver literally raced through the rain today to qualify. This is Dennis Firestone averaging 190 miles per hour, and yet on the back straightaway ran smack into a downpour, and that rain ended the qualifications for the day for the Indy, and of course it ended the Hoffman's hopes of making it this year. So there's Theo Fabi, the rookie record breaker who will be on the pole, joined by Mike Mosley there and uh, Rick Mears in the front row, and there's four-time winner A.J. Foyt, who starts from row eight. His father has just passed away yesterday. I'll have to overcome that adversity. And he'll start from row eight because of uh, a run-in with the rules committee. You're looking at the Silver Creek 300 here. It was run today at Queen City Speedway. Bob Seneca driving his Camaro to a three-length victory over Dick Trickle, who was also driving his Camaro. Seneca averaging 81 miles per hour with Butch Miller coming in third. And loved ones Dave Jackson, 13th, proud of 4,000 on hand for that race. As for hydroplane racing, this is in Missouri. Ron Snyder of Piqua averaged 111 miles per hour, and he piloted Miss Madison to the Missouri Governor's Cup, the first major win for Miss Madison in like five years. If you're wondering about Miss Budweiser, the boat did dominate weekend action, but was out of action today because of engine problems. We move on to golf now. When the day began, Calvin Peet wasn't even within a chip shot of the lead of the Atlanta Golf Classic. I mean, he was buried. He's seven strokes back. Then he sank nine birdies today. Here he is on number 17, and this is one of those ho-hum routine days Oh, man. He takes the lead right there on 17. Here he is on 18, another birdie putt. His ninth birdie of the day put him at 10 under. How about his spectacular round of 63? 10 under for the tournament. Good for the two-stroke win right there over Jim Colbert, Don Pooley, and Chip Beck. The LPGA stop, Pat Bradley had a great day. She was five strokes back, had seven birdies, fired a 66. She gets the one-stroke win there over a rookie, Stephanie Farwick. Interesting uh, Cincinnati story in the United States Football League today. Hometown kid makes good. We're in overtime. This is Chicago and New Jersey. Tim Cagle, number 14, steps in an emergency roll, and he hits Tremaine Johnson for a 38-yard pickup. Now they're in position to win it. Cagle holding the fake. This is, goes down as a five-yard run, but look at the room he covers. He actually covers 15 yards. Tim Cagle, the Muller graduate who had so many problems at Notre Dame, the hero for at least the night, and could be stepping in to replace Greg Landry, who broke his ankle today, is out for the year. The Blitz victorious. Walker, by the way, 141 yards. Elsewhere, Los Angeles beats Denver, Boston over Washington in the USFL. And now, on to the ninth and feature race at River Downs. Ladies and gentlemen, I picked this race. I have this race. Coming down the stretch, look on the outside, number one, the horse's name, Red and Fiery. I picked this horse, Red and Fiery, with Charles Woods Jr. up. I finally got a winner. The drought's over, paying $6.80. Number 10, Snow Lover, tough break. And number four, Blackberry, the daily double of number seven, Gabe's Ruler, number four, Old Hundred, seven and four, pays $211. Now, in the meantime, 
They rolled up a big crowd for the roller derby tonight at the Coliseum. This is the Los Angeles Thunderbirds and uh, the New York Bombers. And I'm not sure which is which there. Oh, going down, I think that's called the Keister Bounce right there. And also a very interested crowd, as you can see, watching these people uh, roll up. I know everybody's interested in the uh, final outcome here, but we don't have a final score for you just yet. But watch this. Watch out. Grab your beer. She's coming right into your living room. The roller derby at the Coliseum tonight. Big success. Thunderbirds and uh, New York Bombers. A couple of baseball moves today. Uh, the Chicago Cubs traded Willie Hernandez to the Phillies for starter Dick Ruthman. Of course, uh, Hernandez pitched the perfect three innings against the Reds today. He goes to the Phillies, who then dealt reliever Sid Manji, had to get rid of a reliever, to San Diego in exchange for uh, utility infielder and outfielder Joe LaFay. We were out there uh, on the roller rink. Is it, was that hard to, to do all those, those falls and stuff like that? Uh, not when you're being held up by people on each side of you. So. Some 200-pound guy <laughs> beating on your head. Okay. Thank you very much, Don. Still ahead on the Weekend Report, area bicyclists pedal along tri-state streets to earn money for juvenile diabetes. Monday at 4 on Little House on the Prairie. Art, appreciation, and French? I wish you luck. What? Because I quit. Ladies and gentlemen, meet your new school teacher. And at 5 on the Jefferson. Hey, good idea. You go to Bumpers, we'll see you later. What's Bumpers? Oh, it's a club where they have male strippers. Oh. <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> Little House on the Prairie and the Jeffersons, Monday at 4 on Channel 12. Pulsar Quartz introduces The Wizard, the world's first and only quartz watch with data displays right on the crystal. At a touch, day, date, and time appear at home and in 26 zones around the world. Plus alarm and professional chronograph. The Wizard has more timekeeping functions than any other watch, and only Pulsar has the Wizard. Affordable Pulsar Quartz watches available at Getz Jewelers, all locations. Hey, Ed. Pretty good interest on those bank money market accounts. The fine princess for a few weeks, Harry. Oh. But I get access to my money even at 4 a.m. Shorter lines then, Harry. Well, Ed, there must be a reason to go to a bank. Are they still giving out toasters? Think it over. Wouldn't you be better off with us? Money market mutual funds. The full-time professionals in the money market. Do you have a lawyer? Most Americans don't. That's why we started Hyatt Legal Services, a new kind of law firm now with offices throughout the country where you can discuss your problem with an attorney for just $15. And for cases like divorce, bankruptcy, and wills, we have standard fees that are very reasonable. At Hyatt Legal Services, we care about you. I'm Joel Hyatt, and you've got my word on it. At Hyatt Legal Services, reasonable fees are the law. Call the office nearest you. Finally tonight, bike riders across the Tri-State took advantage of the break in the rain to do a little fundraising today. Riders at 11 sites in Greater Cincinnati pedaled to earn money for the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. Ouch. <laughs> Just hit our cameraman there, I think. The bike a was sponsored by radio station Q102. The money raised will go towards research in juvenile diabetes. Looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, well, um, memorial service that cameraman will be held tomorrow, I understand. Yes, chance of showers tonight, low of 56. We'd like to thank you very much for joining us. For those in front and behind the cameras, have a good night and a good week as well.